And we're back with The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Time for us to uh, talk about, you know, the issues surrounding the health sector and the education sector. While the health sector is battling its worst brain drain for 2023, with no fewer than 10,229, I beg your pardon, 296 Nigerian trained doctors practicing in the United Kingdom. This is according to the Nigerian Medical Association. Also, the Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors said the number of medical doctors in the country decreased daily. I think that only about 10,000 resident doctors are left in Nigeria. Well, according to the president of the association, Dr. Emeka Oji, about 100,000, or 100, I beg your pardon, resident doctors leave the country monthly to seek greener pastures, insecurity, poor pay, and poor working condition, among other issues, have been identified as the push factors for the healthcare workers uh, leaving the country. Besides the brain drain, Health infrastructure only witness, you know, facilities and new teaching hospitals, but not quite as significant, uh, considering the various levels that we have. Now, and apart from the massive migration of medical personnel to Europe and North America, the same may soon be with us in the education sector as the United Kingdom begins employment of qualified Nigerian teachers from February 2023. We're talking about next month. Now, currently, 350,000 Nigerian teachers are qualified for such employment from a pool of 1.5 million. So you have to do the calculation. Now, the Teachers Registration Council of Nigeria, TRCN, will from February the 1st, 2023, be exempted from sitting or for qualified uh, courses with Teaching Regulation Agency, that's a TR, thereby giving qualified teaching status, QTS in England. Uh, the QTS in England is equivalent of Nigeria's teaching license uh, by the TRCN. So, so the big question here is where does this leave us as a people? Uh, where does this leave us as a country? Now, to make sense of all of this, we have our guests this morning in the studio, uh, Dr. Meba, uh, Meba Wandu. Yeah. <laughs> Tuyi Meba Wandu. Thank you so much for joining us. We yeah. appreciate your time. Thank you. Good morning. Yes, and, and uh, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, by the way. We also have uh, on phone joining us Professor uh, Hope Ehera uh, yeah. joining us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Eha Professor Hope, can you hear us? I can hear you. Well, thank you Good for joining morning. Good morning and Happy New Year. Thank you. All right, so um, let's start off with, uh, you know, Dr. Tuyi here in the studio. Dr. Tuyi, what do we make of this? We hear that we have 24,000 licensed doctors. And as of, you know, 2023, according to recent statistics, the population of Nigeria uh, has been pegged at 218 million plus. What do we, you know, how do we survive with 24 licensed doctors, you know, to take care of a population? 24,000. 24,000, I beg your pardon. Licensed doctors to take care of uh, a population of about 20, 218 million uh, Nigerians. Well, thank you. Um, not just about... Um, the available 24,000 who actually you know, renewed their registration with Nigeria Medical and Dental Council. Um, you, you know that in the next uh, seven years, by 2030, Nigeria population will rise to two, close to 280 million people. And the estimate is that um, you probably need an extra 500,000 nurses and 125,000 or 130,000 doctors. Um, to work and deliver a healthcare system. But um, what we have now is such that Nigeria's capacity to train is compromised. Nigeria's capacity to retain doctors is also compromised. And even our um, ability to update the quality of the doctor, you know, we're having challenges with the numbers, we're having challenges with the mix of the doctors having different types of specialties, and even including nurses. We're having problem with distribution, we are having problem with the quality, and in fact, in the, in the, we are having problem with the delivery of the outcomes of the health system. Outcomes are in terms of, you know, is the person getting well? Outcomes in the sense that is even the treatment acceptable culturally? There are a lot of issues as far as 
uh, the number of health workers and um, their quality is concerned. Now, uh, the key thing is that well, if you are looking at input into the health system, health workforce is very fundamental. The other is building capitals and then, of course, consumables. So, you know, the, hospital, the system input is just that the, the hospital, the doctors or the nurses or the pharmacists as health workers, then input. Other inputs include building capital and then, of course, consumables. So, if you look at Nigeria, um, WHO recommended that we should have one doctor for 600 people. But the country with that 24,000 is just having one doctor for as much as 8,000. And the numbers are reducing. Now, if what that shows that for us to meet that target in 2030, 20, 20, 20, 20, we need to still train, you know, we need a number of doctors that is close to um, 300,000. We need that large number of doctors. So what are we going to do? Where are we going to get all these doctors? Now, you cannot respond to your health challenge if you don't have health workers. Um, we're having challenges with maternal health. We're having challenges with infant mortality. We're having challenges with malnutrition. We're having challenges with, um, with uh, chronic diseases, diabetes, hypertension. Accidents are happening. You just, you know, how many people are dying of simple gunshot injury? Drugs epidemic is coming on. You need health workers to respond to all these things. Without that, if you are going to be having 24,000 uh, uh, 24, doctors in 2023, it means essentially that you are in a really dire crisis situation. Let me give an example. Um, I, I had left medical school since 1988, okay? And that, that should be about 30, 35 years or 34 years, going to 35 years. You know, and my number is, um, you know, um, 6,776. your number for what? What's 6,000? My, well, 6, my number, my, my medical, medical and dental council registration number okay. is 16,767. 16,767. That's my number. That means that as of 40 years ago, you know, that's the number of doctors we, we had in Nigeria. Uh, as of 40 years, for this, 35 years ago, but now, the number is, even, is not even up to 100,000. So it means that in the, in the space of how many um, years, 35 years, Nigeria could not train as much as, you know, uh, 40,000 doctors in addition. Because the capacity, we, we just produce about 3,000 maximum, maximum. Then if you add strike to it, you know, then the end it means that we are not having a requisite number in terms of capacity to train. People are not doing science subjects that will make them enter medical school. The medical school is underfunded. You know, they're not having sufficient teacher to train them there. You know, even to do husbandship and compulsory, compulsory uh, training as for consultancy. Everything is compromised. So that's where we are now. It seems there's no hope. But again, how do we now respond to our health challenges? Okay, um, let's also bring in Professor Hope at this point. Uh, we're talking about, unfortunately, we have been disconnected. Uh, we hope that we have him back on, on, you know, mm. on the line and to talk further about the issue. Professor Hope, can you hear us? Yeah. So um, what do you make of, you know, the recent development? There's a call. We don't know yet whether the Nigerian teachers would move or, or will stay. But uh, what do you make of the call? by the United Kingdom looking for uh, teachers, right? Especially from some certain countries. Nigeria's among uh, these countries. Okay. Well, thank you for having me on the program. Um, it's unfortunate that I can't be here because of connection challenges. Uh, well, let me make a specific statement. This is that labor is always migrate to where it is needed. I'll take it again. Labor will always migrate to where it is needed and appreciated. So if I take a very liberal view of this, I'll say that even in the best of times, persons who are professionals um, are very likely to migrate, to move to where their services are needed 
and where they will be appreciated. And appreciation comes in terms of remuneration, welfare, and all of that. So, in times of economic depression, nations suffer what Nigeria is currently going to, which is migration of people. Uh, put simply, we are saying that when an economy is depressed, especially an economy as huge as one of Nigeria, that is has been estimated to be at 200 million, um, labor would migrate. But the question today is, what are the implications on the system? We started with the medical, medical doctors. Well, we need medical doctors. We need our medical doctors. But our medical doctors are not properly treated here. The neighbor will find its way to where it is appreciated. Only yesterday, a medical doctor was slaughtered by the family of a patient. Slaughtered inside his hospital. Because when they brought in the French with constant wood, he said, okay, I will see you, but please go ahead and get a police report. And then the patient died. They came back and killed him. How do you expect our doctors to be comfortable, to feel safe enough? That is the, his wife is also a doctor. That wife is traumatized forever. Why for teachers? Go to our public primary schools. Go to our, our public secondary schools. Now that is moving to the university system with the current action of the incumbent government. When you treat teachers with liberty, when you treat, treat lecturers with liberty, what will happen? They will migrate. The so entity, we need to go back Hope. to the ground there. Yes. There is no amount of education that you will give to medical doctors. There is no amount of education you will give to teachers. Will they have that opportunity that they want to put in the new place? They will go. They will move. They will migrate. Because we are talking about the lives of individuals. How much do you pay our teachers? How much? In the university system, a lecturer too is PhD. Go, 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 and twenty-five thousand at the end of the month. If he has an opportunity to do the photo, you think he will remain here? So, if you take it for that perspective, labor will always migrate. The thing to do now is because we need their services. You see, I was I think sometime in New York, and I found that in that area, that area of New York, we had about 4,000 doctors from Nigeria. I'm not talking about 400, 4,000. These are people who were trained in UI, trained in Unilad, trained at Eastfair. Professor, I'd like to ask you um, this because we're really running out of time. There's also a response from the NUT as regards, you know, the proposition of the United Kingdom and their concern of, you know, having uh, teachers move from different parts of the world. Hong Kong as part of some of, you know, these countries in Nigeria as well. But the NUT is saying that they are looking for cheap labor and as such, you know, there's almost a doubt that Nigerians might probably not, you know, move. So do you see, um, you know, a possibility of Nigerian teachers going and and is there anything that the Nigerian government can do at this point because we'll probably be losing our hands and it might not just be good enough for the education sector so is there anything that can be done is there a tendency that um, there will go well everything is being patriotic by saying that um, the UK government is looking for cheap labor if you have just if you have encountered, if you have spoken with Nigerians that are in the diaspora, 
if you have spoken with Nigerians that are going through the death pay journey, they will tell you that they would rather be cleaner in Italy, road sweepers in London, than graduate teachers in Nigeria. So there is no amount of exhortation. The average Nigerian youth, it's not like people of my generation, they are just looking for a way to leave Nigeria. However, what the Nigerian government can do is to show concern and improve your services. At this time, you remember at a time when the, Nigerian, the Ghanaian economy was bad, Nigeria was floating by a Ghanaian. There was a time when the Indian economy was bad, Nigeria was floating by an Indian, a nation. I was taught uh, by a nation in secondary school. But once the economy improved, we all went back. So Nigeria should also sit back and improve the economy. We have consultants practicing in America, who will rush back home, we want to stabilize our system there. So, what we are going to do, coming election, let's vote for a government that we can revitalize the idea and ensure that the, the, the policy is peaceful enough and our professionals will come back home. They don't enjoy life abroad. They don't, because abroad they are second class in right, And yeah. you feel more fulfilled if you are here in Lagos. If you are in Delta State, Ataba, worry. If you are in Yenugu, if you are in Nairobi, we are happy to help you. And we are appreciated. Doctor, maybe one day, uh, Professor Hope, we we have to come back to the studio and uh, we're costing it down. And thank you so much for your thoughts. Uh, we do appreciate you. But let's get back to Doctor Tui Maybe one do Tui. Why are we leaving? You know, in the medical. It's obvious. Why, why, why are we leaving? Because the condition is also not favorable. No, it's obvious. We've also had complaints from doctors. Indeed. There's several complaints. Nah, there are groups you know, of complaints. You know, yes. you know, first and foremost, you know, we have our push factors. You know, when you work and for the next six months nobody's paying your salary, you will leave because you have bills. But we've seen people who work Wait, more than wait. That. Yeah, you have people to pay, you know. When your condition of service is so poor, you have to use lantern to do surgery. You leave. When you cannot ask, you know, ascend to the peak of your profession without facing a lot of political uh, background, you leave. When you have children to take care of and they're not having the best of education and you're thinking about their future, you will leave. Okay, when there's a lot of insecurity, somebody enter your hospital, murder you because you, you felt that you, you are God that must heal every, every injury, you will leave. You know, so the, the, the factors are just many, plenty, plenty. But let me tie the concern of education to training of doctors. Now, if you don't fix education system, you can't fix the health system. Let's get it straight. What I mean by fixing the education system is that, you see, you must be you know, strategically recruiting science teachers that will, you know, be able to teach and call people to enter into the health workforce. Because if you don't, don't pick science, how are they going to uh, be trained as a nurse, pharmacist, laboratory scientist, or a doctor? So you have to fix education system, and it's important. And if if UK succeeds in taking our teachers, it's not just going to affect uh, uh, health alone. No, it will affect politics. It will affect thinking. So it will affect society because the starting point, the starting point uh, of turning society around is education. Education is not just a social concern. Education is an economic issue. Is a political issue. It's a health issue. So you know, the first thing is, if we, if we, if we're wise, if we understand that, we should know that we should ever, we should never allow our teachers, and they're going to pick, pick the best so and leave the go. crumbs, and leave the crumbs for us, who will not, you know, give us third, third hand education. Doctor, and you, the country is, 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 is not Esco, like it. But I, I, we want to have this conversation. We should have this conversation uh, some other time, for real, uh, because I'm worried. And the question is, what is the government doing? I don't know if there's any, you know, response. But I'm not sure. I want to get an answer immediately from you. Oh, we'll I'm come not back some other time. We'll come back <laughs> some other time <laughs> okay. and talk about, you know, what the government is doing to ensure that. Uh, we don't have all of this movement because we're talking about the personnel, the manpower here. If they move, then what becomes of you know our country, Nigeria? Quite unfortunate. Uh, that's the size of it at this point in time. Thank you so much, Professor Hope, for being part of the show, and also thank you, Doctor Tu Yume Bawandu, uh, for being with us this morning. We appreciate your time. Thank you.